Today, Rupert Murdoch's son, chief executive of Fox Corporation, Lachlan Murdoch, was forced to acknowledge the mortifying bombshells about Fox's internal workings stemming from the defamation lawsuit brought by Dominion Voting System, saying, quote, I think a lot of the noise you hear about this case is actually not about the law, it's not about journalism, it's really about politics. This is a predictable response. It's what Fox always does in these cases, deny it's a big deal, insist it's all politics, and to their viewers that they're the only network that people can trust. But it's very obvious to everyone right now that there is tremendous internal dissent at Fox. There's still an ongoing fight between Rupert Murdoch and Donald Trump. Murdoch has tried several times to eject Trump from his ownership of the conservative movement and has been unsuccessful. But Trump also needs Fox and Murdoch in order to win a presidential primary. So they're fighting over control, dominion, if you will, of America's conservatives. This functional, dysfunctional relationship has been going on for so long like this, as Jay Mayer wrote in New Yorker back in 2019, quote, in the past two years, many people who watch the network closely, including some Fox alumni, say it has evolved into something that hasn't existed before in the United States. The White House and Fox interact so seamlessly it can be hard to determine during a particular news cycle which one is following the other's lead. Jay Mayer, Chief Washington Correspondent for The New Yorker, joins me now. Jane, I thought of that piece you wrote because in the Dominion filings, what we see is that struggle for control laid bare, right? Like, the people inside Fox know that what Trump is saying are lies, possibly, um, like, lies that will expose them to litigation risk, right? Might endanger American democracy, but their audience likes Trump and wants to hear them, and so they decide to go along. What do you think the state of that very fraught, intense relationship is now? I mean, I think it's more tense than ever, but it's actually been tense if you go back almost from the start. I mean, when you really think of it, it's interesting. Rupert Murdoch and Donald Trump have known each other, by my calculation, for 46 or 47 years. Um, wow. And they've had a kind of a... Uh, sort of mutually beneficial, dysfunctional relationship almost from the start. They were introduced by Roy Cohen, who is one of the more iniquitous sort of fixers in the world of, you know, history of American politics, who had worked for Joe McCarthy. And the original sort of deal that they struck up was at the time um, Murdoch owned the New York Post and he wanted to sell newspapers. And Trump was a rising businessman who wanted to be a celebrity. And so uh, Trump could get publicity from Murdoch and Murdoch could sell papers by uh, writing up the sort of uh, antics of Donald Trump. And so one got fame, the other got money. One got influence and right. the other sort of, you know, media empire, and it kept expanding, and it became, it went from the New York Post to then to, to Fox. Um, and at that point, um, it started, it the, the widened the audience, and kind of the, the business plan, though, for both of them was to kind of drive fear and anger in the working class, class resentment, racial resentment, <coughs> and benefit from it. And... Um, I think what you've seen, though, is that all the way through, there's there have been some tensions. I mean, basically, Murdoch apparently for 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 years has wanted to have a president that he was close to. He's known every president since JFK, but he's never really had a close associate in the White House until Trump, someone he could call on the phone, and he calls him Donald, and they've known each other that long. And 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 Trump got out of out of Murdoch just an incredibly powerful, useful platform given to him by the man who's arguably the most powerful media mogul in the world. Um, and they both benefited for from this for a long time. Um, Fox was making 2.7 billion a year from this relationship right. during, the, you know, the, the Trump years. But but it was uneasy. Um, and 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 Murdoch has long had criticisms about uh, Trump. I mean, he's called him, as we've seen in in, in one write-up, an effing idiot. And um, he disagrees with him about immigration policy. But the bottom line is what Murdoch has had his eye on. And I think that, to me, is what's most amazing about these revelations, is you can see no matter how much Murdoch and the other people around him are holding their nose, they want to make money.
and they're going to keep those viewers no matter what because they want the ratings and they want to keep making money. And that's what you can see through this amazing cache of documents that we've now seen thanks to this lawsuit. You know, that's now they're going to come now to another fork in the road, right? Because they have been freezing him out a little bit. He has not been appearing on the network as much. There's Washington Post reporting on the sort of Fox News, Donald Trump feud. But I feel like if 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 past his prologue here, we're going to go through this again, right? They, they, the, Murdoch tried to kind of knock him out uh, the, the first time around. It didn't work. They need him and he needs them. And I think that's going to be the main financial incentive drive in the coverage that goes forward. But what do you think? Well, I think right now what you can see is that um, Murdoch is trying really hard to push DeSantis yes. <laughs> in hope that he can have another horse to ride that won't be Donald Trump and that this this will, you know, so he's he's trying to do that. But if DeSantis fails, I think, and if, if Trump um, keeps, you know, keeps the base of the Republican Party and, and really continues to dominate the 2024 elections, and I, my bet. I bet you Murdoch's back um, yeah. because that's where, that's where the audience is. That's where the money is. And I mean, it's so interesting. All the way back early on, Roger Ailes, who used to be sort of the kingpin at Fox, warned Murdoch. He said, watch out for Donald Trump. If you're not careful, he's going to control Fox. And here we have this sort of struggle. Yeah. And, and, you know, depending on what happens with Trump, he, he, he may end up with the upper hand all over again. Yeah, Ailes had to leave uh, after a series of uh, horrifying allegations of sexual uh, harassment and and uh, the like. Same thing happened to Bill O'Reilly. There's sort of a history there. Uh, Jane Mayer, thank you very much.